Hi everyone and thanks for tuning in. Um, this is the Grad Fest 2021 Fishbowl and today we are going to be asking questions submitted by all of you. As you can see, I have them all in here. So we're just gonna, it's like a pick and mix. And I'm just gonna fill one and ask the employers. So any, and any other questions that you have during this, you can submit them while we're speaking and we'll look at them at the end. So we're gonna be submitting these questions to John McGuire who is the Northwest Talent Partner at Fintrue. And then we're also gonna be talking to Graham Ryan, who is the Strategic Resourcing Manager at version, at version one. So we're gonna be adding them in soon. So I'm just gonna wait a few minutes just for more people to join and then I'll add them in. So yeah, and also anything else you're wanting to know about GradFest, please go on the website. The website is go.qub.ac.uk slash GradFest 2021. Anything else you want to know that's happening in the next few days and next week, everything's going to be up there. So make sure to scroll through, just find anything that might interest you. But um, yeah, no, today is just going to be about any questions that you have and anything that you feel that's very important has been submitted and we've got them here to ask. Just like this morning, um, as we were saying in the earlier one. So please go check that out as well. It was a live session that any questions you've had submitted, we're gonna be asking the employers. And there's also gonna be one tomorrow as well. So keep an eye on that one as well. So yep, to see more people join in here. Let's see. Yep, so I'll just say again, yep, we're gonna be talking to John McGuire, who is from Northwest Talent Partner at Fintrue, and Graham Ryan, who is the Strategic Resourcing Manager at Version 1, just for anyone that's joining, just so they know. So we're going to be adding them pretty soon. So we're just going to wait a few minutes just to make sure everyone seems to be good to go. Yep, and I can see them here. So I think I'm going to add them in. This should be them starting now. It just takes a few minutes for them to join, so it shouldn't be too long. Oh, there we go. Hello. How's it going? Hi. Guys, well? going? Hi. Can you hear me okay? Yep, I can hear you. It's fine. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Can do. Yeah. Love, love when technology works properly the first time. It's great. Oh, uh, you've no idea trying to get this sorted at first with the, with the mic. Thank God it all works. Brilliant. Well, it's nice to meet you. Welcome to the GradFest 2021 Fishbowl. I have all these questions from all these students. Diana asks you a lot of things. So I'm just going to be pulling them out one by one and I'll just let you know which one's for who. And then in the last maybe 10 minutes, if there's any comments from anyone viewing, we'll probably ask them then. Super. Is that okay? Perfect. Right. Started. I feel like, I feel like, sub, like it's very important here to stretch it in. You see? The first one is for John. So John, I am still job searching. What skills should I brush up on to make me more employable? Good question to start with so look there's all manner of things you could be you could be brushing up on to make yourself more more employable i think one of the key things is is really to go and look at the companies you're interested in joining go and look in the sectors you're interested in getting involved in and, and do your research like there's so much stuff now online um and you have no excuses to really not be not be completely tooled up with all the information you need um to know if you're interested in somewhere and you can find out so so many things about employers and about sectors online at the moment um i suppose the other thing is just you know um don't be afraid to ask questions you can reach out to employers you can reach out to companies on linkedin and through all their different websites and things like that now so i would just practice kind of be in the habit of, of reaching out finding out information go and investigate um because that's a bit of a, a bit of a skill in itself i suppose um, and then all the traditional skills that everyone's looking for, kind of, um, if you can be a self-starter, if you can use your initiative, if you can do all that kind of thing, that's um, probably a, a good place to start, I suppose. That's great. Thank you. Let's see, get one out of another magic, the magic bowl. Da, da, da. Let's see, this is for Graham. So how should I dress going into the office? I got to back into the office, uh, smart casual, uh, I would imagine it's it's different where we're in now, so I'm looking at remote. Well, he's wearing a shirt. Many times we've worn a shirt for me. Probably count them the two hands. And you just have to, I suppose, go with it depending on whatever interview. If it is a meeting, different that's more casual. In the opposite, you know, um, but 
you know, normally away from that then, you know, people just wearing t-shirt jumper, different things like that. So it really depends on the situation and kind of, I suppose, use a kind of cop on when it comes to that. You mm. see, you know yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see. I'm going to this one. It's kind of caught my eye. Let's see. So this is for John. So John, how can I make a good impression in a video interview? I take the I take the screen froze there for John. I you hear me okay, John? I'll say it again. Oh, sure. you're, you're back now. Just yeah, ask ask me that one again. I lost you there for a second. Yeah, no, you're okay. Internet, it just right. It's just, how can I make a good impression in a video interview? Yeah, good good question. And um, things are very different these days. You know, obviously with everyone being on screen <laughs> rather than in person, and you can't shake someone's hand, and you can't kind of get comfortable with them in the same room and sit across the desk from each other. Um, I think it's like it's, it's doing the kind of basics really well and just um, having your research done, doing everything that you would do for a normal job interview, really, um, and just getting comfortable with the fact that you're you're on a screen with someone. We've been doing it for so long now, being, being at home during the pandemic. It's almost become second nature. It's becoming, I hate the phrase, the new normal, but it's becoming normal for us to kind of just do everything on video and all of our recruitment on video. Um, but it's obviously a lot of people's first times coming on to, you know, even though we've done dozens and hundreds of interviews on video, it's, it's always someone's, you know, first time doing a video interview. Um, so I suppose just be comfortable with it. Be kind of aware that it's just a little bit different and don't be worried about things like, um, you know, technical difficulties happening. I think people are really scared about their internet cutting out. Mine just cut out there about two <laughs> seconds ago on us. So Yep. Just, you know, be aware that people are going to make kind of, um, you know, they're going to make room for things happening online that, that don't normally happen in person, like technical issues and all that kind of thing. Um, but look, just be yourself, still be professional, you know, do exactly what you would do in any other interview. Um, and yeah, just don't be afraid to go in and sell yourself, even though it's it's online and not in person. Just to, just to add on that as well, John, like you probably were seeing yourself, Eye contact in, in person was, is always key in an interview situation. But that doesn't mean you need to stare at the camera, you know, that kind of way. We know, like you speak with people when they are looking at us, you know, like none of us here are staring directly down the camera. But yeah, we know we're, we're, we're working eye contact. So that's just another thing. Don't feel like you have to, you know, stare into their it's eyes. And so. send, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's something yeah. that, we, that we get right in person quite, quite easily, like the right amount of eye contact and we're not too intense, we're not too vacant. But yeah, I think, some people can be thinking, I need to stare right into this camera at all times and be really attentive and never blink and that kind of thing. So just be comfortable with it, like just like you are in person. That's that's yep. a really good point, Graham, actually, yeah. Yeah, no, that was good. Thank you. Let me see, what am I gonna get here? This one is for Graham. So how can I use my LinkedIn profile to stand out? Okay, um, so first off, depending on your interest in from a business point of view, you know, follow all the, the companies or, or programs that you're interested in. Certainly, writing blogs, is, is, as we know, for the last couple of years is a huge thing, you know, to comment back on people you are following that are in your area that you either want to get into or you're in at the moment. But also don't forget the personal side as well, you know, your own interests, things like that. Don't feel that LinkedIn is purely there just from a business point of view. If you write up a blog on, on something you're interested in that's not necessarily in the area, you know, people, you know, like that and people are, I suppose, or my image it in, you know, so it's going to be open minded, but definitely get involved, certainly from a blog point of view and, and liking and sharing material, that kind of thing. That's great, thank you. Let's see. I'm going to go for this one. This looks like a long, long question. I'm curious. So, how can I apply some of the skills I have developed in the last year when I start my job? And this is for John. Good one. So, I think in the, in the last year, we've all developed some new skills. Um, in terms of working online, being more kind of based on our own and checking in with people in the virtual environment. Um, I think maybe one of the positives of, of, of kind of what's happened over the last year or two is that some of that's going to remain, I think, going forward and in the future. I think there's going to be a lot more virtual conferences and maybe people traveling to go to training sessions and things mightn't happen as much. So I don't want people to feel like, you know, all these virtual, all this virtual etiquette that everyone's learned is going to go out the window and no one's going to ever use it again. Um, I think it's a good thing to, to have under your belt. I think there's going to be 
Um, like I said, less kind of traveling between offices, the, the virtual kind of options for doing training and doing, you know, team tasks are fantastic at the minute. They're only going to get better. Um, so I would lean heavily on that and, and you know, really use that. And, and it's something that a lot of people haven't had the opportunity to go to. It's been a totally different world for the last year. So I would say don't feel like your your experience of maybe, you know, being in university from, from home and, and all that kind of thing is going to go to waste because it's not. You're going to get some use out of it. Um, and you, you're going to have all those skills there for the future, definitely. That's good. Let's see. One. This one is for John. Yep. So what does onboarding look like for us starting work in 2021? Yep. Um, so like I said, look, the the recruitment, the onboarding process, everything like that is is totally up in the air at the moment. Um, we're thankfully maybe coming to a time where we can start to think about, you know, actually being in an office together. How exciting is that? So um, I'm sure everyone's looking forward to a little bit of human interaction, a little bit of human contact. Um, but say, for example, you know, you're being onboarded now at the minute and everything's still totally virtual and totally remote. Um, all of any company will have put in a lot of work to make sure that the onboarding process is still really smooth and you still get introduced to all the colleagues that you, you need to be introduced to and you don't feel too siloed and you don't feel too alone. Um, I know at Fincher we've put a lot of effort in into making sure that everyone that comes in feels like part of the Fincher team and really embraces the culture and gets involved in everything that they would be getting involved in in the office. Um, so at the moment, that's what it looks like. Every company will be putting a lot of effort into to making sure everyone feels included and, and not left out in the remote environment. But look, hopefully over the next few months and if things um, continue to go reasonably well, we'll be able to, to get some in-person interaction and then we'll all have to figure out how to do that all over again. So that'll be a, a whole new challenge. Great, let's see. So this is for John, you seem to get on. This is John again. So how can I make a good first impression? Brilliant, good question. So yeah, there must be no questions left for you there, Graham. I'm, I'm just going to have to like shake this thing around All and just like figure out what <laughs> um, Good first impression. I think if this is an interview or if this is on your first day, whatever it might be, I think, you know, we want people to be themselves. I think sometimes people get lost in trying to be someone else, either on an interview or on their first day of work, and they have this dream picture of what the dream employee should look like, and they try and be someone else. But we want people, to, and, and every other company will want people to be themselves, just the best version of themselves. Like, you can be professional, um, but, but still just totally be yourself and bring your own passion. For a moment. Um, you know, that's why that's why you've been hired by that company. So I would just totally focus on, on being yourself and, and putting the best best version of yourself across really. That was great, thank you. Let's see. Next one, right? I'm gonna try and shuffle this around. We'll see if we can get apparently not, John, this question's for you. <laughs> what is the worst thing you've ever seen on a CV? This I'm curious about what is the worst? CV. So I would do quite a lot of kind of um, looking at CVs in my position. And, and I think it's the basics, really. It's, you know, maybe if someone says that one of their skills is attention to detail and they've spelled the word attention wrong, you know, that kind of thing. Just maybe <laughs> just the irony of that. Um, there's so much online in terms of, you know, if you go to YouTube or you go to Google, how to write a good CV, a modern, clean, contemporary CV that it's just one of those things you need to get right. So um, there's plenty of resources out there, plenty of, of people and, and kind of um, things that will be able to help you online. Um, but yeah, just basic kind of basic errors are, are kind of the, the glaring things that people should be checking over. So um, yeah, that's probably probably one of them there. Yeah, spelling is key, isn't it? Like it is, we see so many of them, and even at all levels as well. Mm. And it's just, it's just a killer, you know, that kind of way, like, if we're speaking to a hiring manager, we're sending on a CV. Sometimes I just myself, I thought they were a fantastic candidate. We shouldn't. Do that. So you have to be really careful with spelling. But also, another thing in terms of first page, think about the first page. So make sure all the relevant page alone. And then obviously, from there, we, you, you know, you go on. But first page, if it's, if it's not getting the key areas for the role you're trying for, you know, then it's just a little bit harder to just go. Yeah. And a main screenshot of yourself. That's probably a big one. Like making sure your CV is tailored to to what you're going for, because some people's interests and what they're applying to might kind of 
straddle two different areas you know maybe it's kind of a mix of engineering and, and finance or whatever and they're applying for two different kind of things those two roles require maybe two totally different cvs um like graham said all the the, the maybe the um the experience is ranked differently and there's nothing as bad as seeing some really good experience buried down somewhere in a CV where people haven't noticed that and, and put that right up in paragraph one. So um, that's a really good one as well. A more general point, just tailor your CV um, and, and highlight the experience and the skills you have that are going to be relevant for, for that role. So. That's great. Thank you. Right. Let's see. Right. Thanks. Thanks for helping out with one of my questions, Graham. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Graham, you're in luck at you now, so I find pumped. So how do I build valuable work relationships in a virtual environment? Okay, so in terms of when if you're coming on board and um, you're starting in a new role, be it, so you have to make a good first impression. It, it's key, you know, if you're given tasks, make it a good start from, from the get-go. In terms of that, it's a regular catch-up with people across the business. In terms of their not to say the onboarding, you know, what we recommend people do to come on board is to do different catch-up sessions with different parts of the business. Don't be scared to do that, you know, be, be open-minded to have a chat with other people across the business. And that way, when we come back, hopefully, very soon to a, a, a face-to-face world, it'll be a lot easier for yourself then. You'll know a lot of people in different areas. But, like, some people could be afraid of that. It's not. Like, it's absolutely open-minded, especially the world we're in at the moment. But definitely from the get-go, is to gain trust of others, you know, by by doing a good job, keeping communication going and so on. I think that's a really key a key thing is especially virtually I think see a session that they might want to get involved in, but they're very keen to say, Oh, maybe that's not my maybe that's not my thing to get involved in or maybe I shouldn't be in that. I think we like to see when people have the totally opposite mindset and kind of say, Why not? Like, why not give that a go? And I'll just, you know, dip my toe in here and see how this is and get involved in things that maybe you normally wouldn't. It's that openness to just jump in with both feet and really just um, go for it. So I would agree with you there, Greg. Yeah. Yep. No, absolutely. Let me see. And this is for John. So if I was going to do one thing today to make me stand out in the recruitment process, what would that be? Yeah, good, good question again. I think it comes down again to research. I think look at the company you're applying for, look at the role you're applying for and know absolutely, absolutely everything there is to know. I think it's something that really impresses employers and, and companies when you've done that. And I think on the other hand, it's something that maybe can let you down in, in interviews and in recruitment processes if you're not armed with all the information that's out there because it's like I keep saying, it's it's all out there at the moment. It's not as if you have to go and, and go digging for it or go anywhere and find it. It's literally at your fingertips. It's on your computer. It's on your phone. So I would say number one thing is research, research, research. Just get everything you can um, under your belt about the company you're applying for, the role you're applying for. And, and like I said earlier, I think we mentioned this earlier, don't be afraid to reach out and ask questions in advance, you know, to maybe people on LinkedIn or different organizations, whatever it might be, I would say just have all the information and show how keen you are to really, to really go for a role. Um, because if you've done that, like you, you're going to be, you're going to be moving on to the next step. I think. Yeah, just one of the key things there, I suppose, exactly what you're talking about there, John, in terms of research, one of the, like you find not, not a lot of people do this, but when you're Googling a company, just go into the news tab and you find out the recent stories because you don't get caught in an interview if a company has had a recent win and then they ask you about it, what did you think of a recent win in this area? You're sitting, you know, <laughs> blindsided. So have a look at the news tab of Google when you are going for an interview in a company because it'll give you the recent news. And just in case it's brought up, you never know, it could be brought up. Or at least the candidate could bring it up and say, oh, I saw this. And then I'll obviously be very impressed if, if someone did that. So, Yeah, I think as well, like even if you look at companies' social media profiles, like everyone has... Instagrams and Twitters and LinkedIn profiles, you can see a lot of the stuff the company does culturally as well. So maybe some of the charity partners they work with, maybe some of the things they get involved in outside of the daily nine to five. And, and that will give you another flavor for the company you're applying for. And it will show that company that, you know, I really want to get involved here and I've, I've had a look. So we would recommend that. Yeah, no, that's good. That's a very good point with the Google one. I, yeah, I think I should have realized that and I didn't, but that, no, that is a good point to go on that. Let me see. 
this is for John. Graham, I think yours are going to be like all at the bottom and you're just going to get the last like 10. <laughs> it's, a, it's a team a team effort, Lauren. We're, we're still answering these together, so it sounds good. Well, <laughs> this one is how can I embed myself in my new virtual team? Yeah, um, we've kind of touched on this already. I suppose yeah. it's the, the thing I kind of say to people when they start with us is I know personally, I picked up so much, um, even just bumping into people when I was getting coffee or going on my lunch break or going up the elevator or whatever, whatever it is. And you just stumble into people and stumble into things you didn't know before. So I think you have to work harder to get those opportunities. I think you have to be the one who maybe sends a Teams message or sends a Skype message or whatever it might be and says, how's it going even? Or just, just speak to someone, just catch up on someone's weekend and maybe you discover you've got things in common and who knows where it goes from there. There's so many things that kind of happen accidentally in an office just by bumping in and chatting to people. Um, and we don't get those opportunities now. Like when I go for coffee, it's, it's me and the dog, like there's no one else. So <laughs> it's not as if I have any, any colleagues to bump into or, or, or just catch up on the weekend. So I think um, everything at the moment can be really transactional in an office. It can be all to do with work. You only message someone when they need something or you need something for a piece of work. I think setting time aside to literally just call someone or message someone and say, how was your how was your football match at the weekend? Or did you go for that hike you were talking about going on? And just really making a conscious effort to do that because otherwise we don't get those kind of casual opportunities that we, we normally would in the office. That would be my advice. Yeah, that's good. Let's see. We got one, Graham. There we go. So... What is the etiquette for virtual meetings? Should I keep my camera on? Should I put my hand up to contribute? And when should I use the chat feature? Yeah, so obviously always camera on unless you know, you're know told otherwise, certainly camera on in an interview setting as always, but in a meeting situation, certainly. Like the chat, we, we use it in, in terms of our scrums that we have on a daily basis. Our chat is always used throughout it. And some people put up their hand or they raise their hand on the on Microsoft Teams, for example. There's no problem doing that. Or else just write a comment in if it's something like a question or like that. Again, it's it's just not don't be afraid of what the right thing to do is. All the tools are there. So use them, be it if you want to put up your hand or write in the comment section. Or, you know, if there's a gap to come in with your point when you're not on mute. You know, like it's don't overthink it, don't be worried about it. You know, people, there's no right or wrong way of doing it. You know, that kind of way. Some people actually will. The same person I know for myself will always click the hand signal and then another person will always come in with their comments. So, you know, don't, not to worry about it. It's all about getting comfortable, especially for someone who's a new joiner. Like maybe someone is comfortable unmuting themselves and jumping in and saying, actually, I've got an idea that I'd like to share. Maybe someone just wants to put their hand up and, and someone can come around to them. It's just whatever makes you comfortable in, in this kind of online world. Um, and like Graham said, all the tools are there. Like you've every opportunity to use the chats, use all the different signals and all that. So um, just whatever, whatever makes you feel comfortable, I suppose. So this one is for John. So John, I still don't know what I want to do. Can you give me any advice? Yeah, so I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. So that's a good, <laughs> a good starting point. Um, yeah. I think I think that's okay. I think I think people, you know, we've always had to choose really early in our lives about A levels and de degrees and everything like that. And it, it can be hard to know what exactly you want to do. So I would stop thinking about what job you want to do, I would stop thinking of a job title and I would start thinking about maybe what do you want your days to look like or what do you want your career to look like in terms of do you want to work with people, do you want to be traveling, do you want to be based somewhere, do you want to work with technology, I would, I would start trying to come up with a career like that rather than going straight to the kind of um, name of the career or name of the job that you're dreaming up, I would start dreaming up the skills you have what you want your days to look like, who you want to work with um, and all that kind of thing. Because I know one of the best things about my role is working with people, getting to do things like this. And that's why I've kind of steered myself this this direction. So um, if that's something you're interested in, like I would start thinking that way rather than thinking about about the ultimate job title at the end, I suppose, because that's really, really a difficult way to do it. Um, yeah, start thinking about skills, start thinking about things you want to do on a daily basis. And hopefully you'll have that a clear picture of the industries and stuff you can go and start looking at then. 
Yeah, just adding in on that as well, John. Like I look after the, the graduate program here in version one and the main thing I'd say to people considering we are consultancy as well is just be open minded. So whoever asked that question is probably worried that oh my God, everyone else knows what they want to do. I I don't really know. I won't be able to last or well, you know, it's not that case. It's be open minded. We would say to someone for example, at the moment, it seems to be an awful lot of students doing data analytics, for example. So, you know, to come into a, a company that might have a small amount of data analytic roles, be open-minded. We've all gone into roles in the past where we turn up with Brian going down and you've just taken a different road. And all of a sudden, you, you love it. You know what I mean? So not to worry about not, not knowing exactly what you want to do, but certainly be open-minded and make sure you're in the, you know, generate the right field that they kind of want to see their career in anyway. I think, I think if you asked anyone who's had any sort of career history uh, to kind of describe how, how they thought the role was going to be and how it actually turned out, it always turns out a little bit differently. So I think, um, I think Graham's right. It's like being open-minded um, and sometimes, you know, things take you down different paths for, for all the right reasons and, and that can turn out for the best. So yeah, just be open-minded and, and, um, and yeah, I would start thinking that way. Yep. No, oh, sir. See. Right, this is for John. <laughs> if I don't like my job at first, how long should I stick at it? Probably a good question to get after the last question we've just had. So um, I think it's going to take you a while to figure out what your what your role actually is and figure out the feel of the company you join and all that kind of thing. Um, I think you probably you've done your research if, if you end up you know going for a role a graduate role and and there's been something that's led you to apply for this company and, and join the company or whatever role you, you end up in um i think you have to give it some time i think a lot of things can you know when they're feeling new and, and you don't you're not totally you know getting to grips with the role yet um i think you can start thinking oh maybe i don't like this maybe i'm not capable like maybe this is something i shouldn't be involved in um but look, I think it takes a number of months for anyone to get settled into any kind of new role, or even if you if you don't change company, even if you just change role within your own business, I think it can take you a few months to get up to speed properly and get settled in. So um, I think you just have to know yourself. And um, if it's something that you you totally know that this is the, the wrong decision, I think you'll figure that out pretty quickly. Um, but don't be too hasty and, and give, the, give the role, you know, maybe a few months to see how it goes and see how... Um, how you pick everything up because I think we can confuse not knowing everything about a role and not being totally comfortable with the role um, with maybe not liking it so I think you owe it to yourself to, to give you a little while to um, settle in. Yeah and certainly for doing that as well you get better opportunities to move into a different role in the company if you're to come in and be hate John saying there you know the opportunities within the company are not going to be handed to you then. You know, if you get in, put your head down, might be an area where you necessarily want to end up or stay in, but just work hard at it. And then all of a sudden you'll see the opportunities come at you without a shadow of a doubt. And I think you can still pick up skills, develop your career, like build your CV, even if it is in that kind of few months period where you're not totally sure. Um, I think you could, there's still a lot of learning opportunities and a lot of things you can do to really you know move forward and not not waste that time where you're really figuring out what you want to do so um definitely graham like it's not it's not something you just kind of jump ship on too quickly so you stick with it for a while yep so okay so you can kind of be doing this anyway but this is for both of you it's john and graham so there we go what are the top skills you're looking for in graduates so Whoever wants to go first, please. Since, since, since Graham hasn't well, had as many, I don't mind. I don't mind letting <laughs> you go first this time, Graham. <laughs> no worries. So, in terms of, of technical skills, I'll head off this first anyway. In terms of that, so like software engineers is a big thing at the moment. Be it .NET, Java, uh, Python, um, data analytics, business an analysis. Um, DevOps engineers, there are a lot of those skills. Um, then there's the soft skills as well that people can upskill on themselves. You know, depending on the company, certainly um, development is a key area that a lot of companies are looking out for. Certainly we are, and we're going to be running a program in mid-August actually for eight weeks and in terms of Digital Skills Academy to grow out on that. Um, but yeah, across the board, software engineers, DevOps, uh, data analytics, that kind of thing. Brilliant. I suppose Graham's covered the kind of technical things and maybe I'll go at it from a, a slightly different angle then. So we say to our new, our new starts all the time, like we can teach you everything that you want to know about finance, you know, under the sun. We can teach all that, like that's fine. 
but it's the kind of the attitude that comes within you that we can't really teach and that ability to you know work hard be a kind of self-starter be able to prioritize your work be able to know when to reach out when you you know you, you want help with something know when you should be working on your own it's all those kind of skills that we we um we love to see in people like we can come we can teach the the technical stuff that side of it is is fine anyone can pick that up um but we just like to see people with the the right attitude and, and the right approach to work i suppose so that's maybe answering that from a slightly different angle but hopefully that's given a good answer overall yeah, no, definitely. Yep. Let me see. So this one is for just John. But so what support will I get starting a new job working from home? Yeah, so I know from our perspective, we will have a lot of support in place. So you'll have things like you'll have your dedicated line manager, you have someone like me looking after the kind of graduate programs and, and the new start programs. Um and look, everyone's so conscious at the minute of, of nobody getting left behind in this online world. So we'll be reaching out a lot more and, and checking in with all of our, our new starts um, as much as possible. We we want it to feel like you're in the office and, and feel like you're still sitting beside people and having that support that you just have naturally being in an office. Um, so I know at, at Fintry, we're, we're, um, we're really, you know, reaching out to people. Um, and making sure they're 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 supported from the start. So I know other companies will have done a lot of work on that as well. And it's just something you have to be a lot more on top of and in, in, in kind of um, the online world. The other thing I would say is don't be afraid to, to reach out. The same way you would stop someone in the office and maybe ask them a question that's on your mind. Don't be afraid to kind of pick up the phone or go on Teams. I think people, especially people who may be new to a company, they feel like they're annoying people when they send them a Teams message. It's almost like, oh, sorry to, sorry to interrupt your day or sorry to interrupt what you're doing. But like, that's what everyone's for. Everyone's there to help. And, um, and no one's going to kind of be annoyed at you sending them a Teams message to ask them a, ask them a question in your first few weeks. So don't be afraid to, to reach out as well. Yeah, it is because you'll get senior leaders in the business when the graduates reach out to get a bit more information. They're really impressed. It's a very, very positive thing. People are easier, um, easily accessible nowadays. So I know it's not face to face, but you know, a lot of it, everyone's online. So a quick message across to catch up for a five, 10 minute chat. You know, it's there. It's there. It, it was always there, but now it's there even more so now. Mm -hmm. But it, it's, it's seen as a really positive thing from a senior leader. Looking at that, absolutely. Yeah. We'll get a question here. So this is for Graham. So Graham, who should I ask to be a reference on my application form? Okay, in terms of the CV, so this? Yes, I'll say, I'll, I assume that must mean for the CV. Yeah, okay, well, I wouldn't put the references down on the CV, straight, straight off, so I'd always be available upon request. If you follow an on, it should be your most recent role, or if you haven't, if you're coming from college, you're in college, or is that a part-time job? Um, you know your boss and certainly I wouldn't recommend putting it on a um, on a on CV. You know, for, I've seen things in the past where people have put on the CV, and some employers have actually reached out to them before the candidates have a chance to actually play this and go for a job here. So just take that off the table, don't just don't. Yeah, I, I couldn't I couldn't agree more. It probably goes back to that question we answered. Maybe what's the what's one of the worst things you've seen in the CV? I think it's. <laughs> If, if you haven't told your references or your referees that, you know, I'm applying for a role and someone might reach out to you. So I, I totally agree, Graham. Mm -hmm. And I agree with kind of who you've said maybe to put down as those key key references. But yeah, like just another another CV basic, really, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. So this is for John. So John, how should... In my hand, there we go. How should I prepare before my first day? Yeah, so um, your first day in, in a company, look, the company will make sure that you have everything you need to, to get started. Um, I think any necessary kind of information that you're going to need to start on day one, you're already going to already gonna have really from the company. Um, again, it comes down to, to research and just knowing everything you can about the company, know what's going on in the company at any given moment and just be really up to speed with, um, like Graham said earlier, any of the key news and anything that's really happening and just get a feel for the, the, the company and the role you're starting off with. Um, again, I think a lot of this comes down to if you're not sure and you think that maybe you're missing something that, that you should have, don't be afraid to reach out to your new employer and, and reach out to maybe the, the contacts that you've been dealing with at any, any time. I think um, 
especially these days with with the online thing and the virtual nature of things you know you, sometimes you just have to reach out and kind of ask for stuff as well so I, I would say to people don't be afraid to lift the phone and just ring that number that's on online to contact a company or, or whatever i think people are kind of timid about doing that sometimes um so don't be don't be worried about doing that at all um that's that's something that that people actually have a lot of respect for it's kind of like what graham was saying about you know new, new starts maybe reaching out to more senior you know members of, of the team and things like that that's that's re really well respected but you know a company should have everything they need with you for day one um and, and like on top of that just go with your research and and, and don't be afraid to reach out just like i said yep. That's great. So this one is for Graham. What do you love to see in a new recruit? Um, for them, really, to attitude. Um, someone who's got is very driven. You know, wants to learn. They're open-minded. They want to keep involved. It really is. People come on board. It's all down to attitude because it just it gets you so far. You can come with all the knowledge, but if you have a bad attitude or wrong attitude to work. So certainly someone who comes in fresh and, and ready. I'm not going to be an extrovert or an introvert. Or like that. It's just a good attitude to want to learn um, and try different things, put your hand up, um, to get involved in different things that may not be much on the different projects, different teams that's available to get your hand up. So I think the attitude really is, is key to kind of hit the ground running. Yeah. Yeah. This is another one for Graham. So Graham, what can I do to make myself more employable? Okay, so in terms of that, so really upskilling. So if obviously you're in college, you upscale within the area that you're looking to go in and do some things in the, in the evening time uh, to upscale in that, certainly to be more employable in terms from the, you know, the interview process, the obviously on time, across well, like the icon we're talking about there, there then. But you know, basic things from going back to a face to face in terms of, you know, boom on time. But it, it, it's the world now, you know, that is key. You know, if someone, you know, turns up late, it doesn't give a, a good vibe. Have everything prepared. You're not stressing about it. But uh, certainly upskilling in the area of different courses. Get involved in different, just say, for example, a coder, getting involved with different coding competitions and things like that that you can actually add on your CV. And it'll show them outside the norm, okay, this person here has tried different things, you know, so they must have a good bit of drive about them to kind of go on in their career. So, yeah, that kind of thing. I think another good bit of advice, and it maybe fits in with that question, Lauren, is I think a lot of people don't know what they're good at and maybe what they need to improve yeah. on as well. I think if some someone was asked, you know, so what are you good at? Like, I think a lot of people greet that question with kind of, uh, I'm, I'm not sure, like I'm mm -hmm. kind of an all-rounder. But you really need to be aware of, of what you're good at and maybe what you need to what you need to improve on. I know like personally, my kind of technical skills, like if we think of Excel and things like that, they get to a point and then they're not brilliant. So I know that's something I always need to work on. Um, but I think you need to sit down at times, various times during your kind of education and, and you know, especially near the end of, you know, when you're thinking about applying for jobs and just really sit down and figure out, right, what am I good at? What am I good at that's got me to where I am and maybe where are the are the gaps and where are the things I could, like Graham said, upskill or learn new skills or kind of even just get a basic proficiency in some things that are, you know, necessary for, for modern jobs. So I think that's a good thing. That was a good bit of advice I got, like figure out what you're good at and, and figure out where you need to improve as well. Yep. Wait, to see. This one is for Graham. See, this is why this is all I'm coming now at the end. Let's see, Graham. <laughs> What can I say in an interview when I have spent the last year at home? Okay, so listen, it's if someone is being at home and they're working it, it comes up two ways looking at it. So again, it comes back from the last point is to use the time. You know, hopefully they use the time to be an upscale in a different area if they're out of employment, um, which unfortunately a lot of people wear. But to actually say what you've read up on, you don't have to do specific courses, but certainly have have an understanding of what you got up to the last year. Have a rehearsal, you know. I'm not saying lying or it like that. I just say what you've actually done to, uh, to read up on and so on and show it. Certainly, from a from a work aspect, if someone's coming from another role, you know, it's talking about their previous position. But I think a lot of you know, listen. We've all seen last year people have taken up banana bread, uh, oh, yeah. you know, sour bread, <laughs> <different> things, <laughs> things like 
uh, an awful lot of people have done stuff for their career as well, you know, that company. So just explain exactly what you've been up to and what you've been up on and more so than that else, you know. I think it's common ground as well. Like everyone's been through it, so everyone's been at home. And it's one of those things in an interview, like establishing rapport and establishing, you know, there's nothing as nice as going on to an interview and instantly finding out that you're interested in maybe something similar because it just puts people at ease and mm. kind of settles, you know, the interviewer and the interviewee. So that's one thing. Look, everyone's been at home, so everyone can talk about that. And we've all been through the same experience. So um, it's it's viewing it as, you know, not oh, I've just been at home for the last year and a half. It's, you know, saying what you got involved in and, and all those different skills you picked up. And even things like, you know, we joked about the banana bread and the, the sourdough bread and stuff. But people do like to hear that sometimes, like just maybe what you've done, maybe you've, you've improved your cooking or whatever it might be. So, um, yeah, that's that's good advice. See. This one, this one is for John. So, John, what training do you provide graduates? Yeah, so we um, at Fintry have a, a dedicated learning and development team. The kind of um, the the way we view it is the learning never really stops. So you kind of come in from. If I look at someone coming in on our financial services academy, there's loads of training provided in the in the graduate academy. And um, when you come into the business and join one of our various projects, there'll be loads of project specific training and things like that. And really all the way through your career, depending on what, you know, what role you're in and where you go in the business, we will have dedicated training available and and um, that'll be specific to your role maybe at any given time. I know, for example, like in my role, dealing with people all the time and, and being quite involved with all of our new joiners. I've recently gone through like a, a mental health um, first aid training session and, and that kind of training side of things. So it's not just traditional examinations. It's, you know, maybe some leadership modules, maybe some management modules, things like that. Um, so there's lots of training in place. It never really stops. Um, I've been with Fintry many years now and I've never stopped learning. I'm always picking up things. So um yeah it's one of the one of the things we really focus on is developing our people and and investing back in our people we have our four key values our four p's and one of the p's is people so it's something that's really important to us um you know investing in our people and developing them and growing them through the business really yeah. that's good let's see this one is for john so john what is the most common mistake you see in interviews yeah, so I think we talked about it. I think we talked about it earlier, and it's trying intense to intense staring. <laughs> apart from the intense staring, yeah, which is which is more to do with more to do with teams. I don't I don't think mm. people do that in person quite as much, thankfully. Um, it's trying to be someone else. I think I think it's that that can come across as really kind of stilted and rehearsed. And I think your research can be brilliant, and you can have done everything right. But if you try and stand up and convey it as if you're trying to be, you know someone else like this version of someone that you think you should be that's not that's not the, the way to do it i think you just have to be yourself like um everyone's different we you know we want to see you be you um and bring the best version of yourself really to the to the table so i think once you've got your research done and once you've kind of you've, you're you're armed with everything you need for the interview um i would say look just be yourself you can be professional you can still be personable at the same time and you can still have a wee bit of a kind of you know um, you know, a bit of your own personality shining through in the interview. So I think people try and nearly, you know, bleach all the personality out sometimes in, in interviews and try and be really, you know, robotic and stuff. But we want to see, we want to see that personality and we want to see you be you, really. So I don't know if you agree, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 100% I do, John. And, and like at the end of the day, an interview, it's it's a conversation. You know, at the end of the day, when you're having a chat with anyone on the street or anything like that, you don't just shut up shop and kind of, you know, just treat it as if it's a conversation that the interviewer is trying to get more information out of you. So if you don't know something or ask you a question that you're unsure of, feel free to get them to reword the question. But what I would say is certainly if you don't know it, say that, but don't walk it on. There's nothing worse than I can walk it on because then, you know, an interviewer will literally go, yeah, they didn't have a clue and they just walked them for five minutes and you didn't get out of it. You put your hand up and say, I'm actually not paid, it's not my area of expertise or whatever it may be. But certainly just be careful of the of the waffle in terms of a uh, of an interviewer because it, it happens. It's a, it's naturally a thing for nerves as well. So people feel that they have to impress at every given question. But just, you know, have a think about it from that aspect as well. I think interviews are so, they're such a snapshot as well. Like they're not, you know, they don't take all day and you can't spend all day interviewing someone and getting to know them. So it's that five minutes of waffle that would be better used on another question where you can really shine. So 
don't you know think you've got a really tricky question and I'm gonna have to think of my feet here and just waffle through and, and come up with something um I think you're yeah. better using that time just moving on just saying you know I'm not really too sure about that but you know and just move on um so yeah, yeah, I agree. yeah. Couldn't, couldn't agree more it's it's five minutes you're not going to get get the show off your your own skills so yeah yeah and in terms I know we're talking interview skills here but the other side is first impressions first impressions are key you will get some higher managers that will decide in the first couple of minutes what their thoughts are you know that kind of way so it's literally come you know be warm have a smile like we do in a face-to-face -face smile a strong handshake we can't do the strong handshake but you know be bring yourself as, as a warm person to the conversation because if you come in with a closed closed shop you know it's just hard to come back from that unfortunately uh, the other thing i think even people who maybe say that they don't make up their mind within the first few minutes a lot of those people you know those first few seconds are are really key and even if your interviewers keeping a really really open mind i think it's just human nature like to make mm -hmm. that kind of quick kind of split second decision and and not maybe make the decision but it, it sort of dictates what tone the interview maybe gets off on and, and just maybe sends you down the right or, or or slightly maybe um less right path to start with so yeah first impressions just be yourself be open be warm be, be willing to chat and, and don't close up shop like graham was saying there yeah yeah let's see got this one this is for john so john i don't have a graduate job where can i find opportunities yeah so um look short answer again is online like i think these days we have absolutely no excuse to not be not be kind of um totally up to date with everything that's out there i think if you dip for a general search online for graduate roles in your area like that's a fantastic place to start and then every single business that you are interested in will have a website, will have social media, will have everything out there that you need to kind of go and get a go and get an initial look at anyway. And then I keep saying it, but look, follow up with questions if you want. Like, don't be afraid to reach out to potential employers or or even people that you may know that have worked in that industry or worked with that company before. So don't be afraid to ask questions. You learn so much just by speaking with people and asking questions. Um, so I would say that. But look. Online's a great place to start. Um, you don't have to wait for the, the weekly newspaper anymore and see the opportunities and, and circle them in the back of the paper or anything like that. So look, it's it's all there. It's all out there for you. And if you want it, you can just go and look for it. And, and if you really want to get involved in a company, you have everything you need to get started. So um, just go for it, really. Just start looking, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. Like we're all in different WhatsApp groups and things. <laughs> some things are painful, some are not. You just ask, ask your pals as well, your mates that would have done recently, or their siblings, and that you'd be amazed how much different companies you'll get out by reaching out to your friends and things like that. So exactly, John said that, and online and things like that. It, it comes back as well to one of the earlier questions we had, like talking about LinkedIn. Like, I think people just think LinkedIn's like a facebook but where everyone's wearing shirts and ties like it's not it's it's not just that it's a lot more there's a lot of opportunities there and it's a tool you can use to reach out to people say you're interested in things start sharing the things you're you're really um you know passionate about working on or, or you know the kind of people you're passionate about working with so i would i would lean on linkedin quite heavily as well or just to, to start looking for opportunities oh definitely well so this one, I'm going to ask this one, and then if anyone who's watching wants to add any comments or questions, please work away. If not, I've still got a few left we can use before the end of the yeah. the live session. But this one is for Graham. So Graham, am I still expected to dress for the office in my kitchen? <laughs> Again, go back to your question. It really <laughs> depends. You know, like the way if this, there's a team of us, so I don't wish it every day. You know, I wear a lot of time. Actually, we don't need fit on in some parts of the house. So, no, you definitely don't need to be dressed in, in full suit and tie or anything like that in the kitchen. But um, it really comes down to the meetings, depending on the meetings. Like, listen, I've been cut out by some colleagues of mine that I've got to drop the kids into Gretchen, I've got a hat on me, and I'm like, you know, <laughs> but listen. Don't be too worried about it. We just dress according to whatever at the meeting is in January, certainly. I think the other thing is, like, if you're in any doubt, maybe lean towards the side of being slightly more formal and then you can pull back. Don't don't be turning up in your kind of, you know, your uh, whatever it is, your football top, and then everyone else is sitting with their ties on. Like, mm -hmm. just kind of, um, like Graham said, you'll, you'll, you'll get a feel for it. And 
like I know depending on what meetings I'm going to like I might be in a full suit and tie maybe we're speaking with clients or or maybe you know things like that or maybe we're just having a more casual chat with some new joiners and everyone's in their polo shirts or whatever it be so um yeah. yeah it's just just getting used to it like so mm. The, um, like our, when I was, uh, we do video interviews as part of our graduate program, and uh, just bear it in mind, <laughs> this one guy wore a shirt and tie, he got up to get something, he was wearing a pair of shorts, oh, no. like, because <laughs> 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 he, he probably forgot like two, three minutes into it that he was in a shirt, uh, in a pair of shorts, and mm -hmm. I think it was either his doorbell went off or something like that, it was like, listen, we had to laugh about it, certainly it was something like that, but you know, it could easily do. <laughs> mm. Oh my god! Yeah, just just don't show up in a wee dress and get in your pajamas. Then, anyway, so just no one do that. Yeah. <laughs> PJs, PJs are are a no go at any time. I think, unfortunately. <laughs> Let me see. I think I see a wee question here. I'll see if I can load up. So this one is for Graham. So Graham, if you Google news on a company, how can you drop it into and an interview without sounding rehearsed? But you, you just say, for example, you know, if it, there's always a situation in you when you're given an opportunity to ask questions. Okay, so be that most of the time at the end, what I would do is actually would, I wouldn't wait for that for the interview. I'd ask if there was an opportunity within it to answer a question. Say, well, I did notice. I'm going to mention, like, a, for example, a win. Say, for a consultancy who want a bit of business in a public sector, most of whatever it may be. Is actually say, oh, I noticed, uh, you know, you won that. Would you tell me a bit more about the type of project you're going to be doing with it, what type of implementation you're going to be doing on it, you know, things like that. And um, bring it forward in the interview way to the end, because as we talked about there from the interview, decision could be made near the end. Um, so bring it forward. But feel free to kind of bring it to almost an answer. To it. So I did notice you had one this sort of You've acquired this company here, you know, that kind of a thing. But don't make it, like, it's not going to come across stage if you can say, oh, I always saw this or I noticed this, that kind of thing. Yeah. I think that's that section of the interview is probably something we haven't talked about as well. Like, interviews can be unpredictable and you kind of don't know what questions are coming and they can go all sorts of different ways. But 99% of interviews are going to give you the chance to ask questions at the end. So that's your chance to really have loaded up on some information, on some interesting questions. Like you don't need to make them too complicated. Like you don't need to come in with a really highbrow, crazy kind of question. Just something interesting, or maybe a different angle on something, or maybe a, you know a piece of research that you've seen in the news, or the company has a new office somewhere and you like the look of it, or whatever it might be. Like that's a really good opportunity to shine and show off because it's always going to be there in an interview, um, and, and you know yeah. it's coming. So you might as well be as as well prepared for it as you can. Just the same way you can't know what questions are coming, so you have to prepare more generally you can really prepare for that question section with, with lots of information. It's, it can be a really, really strong section for for graduates. Um, even if they feel like they haven't given the best account of themselves in, in like an interview, it can be a brilliant, a brilliant session to really show off your strengths. Let me see, I think I see another one here. So this one, I suppose both of you can answer this if you want. What could I ask at the end of an interview? I think you were there we go. We've sort of, yeah. we've sort of got answered that yeah, one. Yeah, we've been really answering questions, people, people's questions. Um, yeah, I think, you know, one of the things I will say is, is during that, that section of the interview, don't have no questions. Even if you think you know everything and you're happy with everything and you're content with everything, just have a few questions lined up. I think it's, it's a real kind of deflating end to an interview when maybe you say, you know, do you have any questions for us about anything to do with the company? And, and people are like, no, I'm, I'm fine. It's just a real kind of slow finish to an interview sometimes to so just have, I would say just have something. That would be my my advice. Yeah, certainly. And keep away from using the question to ask for a salary like that again because it just can give off a wrong but like another thing you could say is you know, in terms of the role that, that they're going in for is how would it look ideally if you're asking the interviewer would you like this person to succeed in this role you know what kind of targets would there be how could I shape this role you know things like that more role specific that would be what are the benefits how many holidays am I getting what are you going to pay me and things like it's just gives off a bad vibe but another thing as well just to come you just not to curse I know it sounds mm. maybe I could easily pop out, but just just to be conscious of that because this can be all snips here and there, but um, it can, it can happen, you know. <laughs> I 
it's it's that online thing as well. I think people get comfortable and casual and get a little bit a bit too too relaxed yeah. and chilled out at times, and it can't like it can slip out and maybe technical issues and something's happening in your laptop and you slip something out there. So just like just be professional at all times. I think some of the some of the best questions that that we've got in interviews, you know been asked by by interviewees is exactly what graham's saying maybe someone has asked i think recently you know how would you guys measure measure my success in this role like you know that's a really good question it's asking what do i need to do to be successful it's showing that you're really keen on getting feedback it's showing that you want to stay it's showing that you want to grow into the role so you can ask some really really good um you know questions with a lot of impact definitely at the end yeah i know like um an interesting one before is a lot of interviewees get asked is you know what do you plan what's the next five years what are you going to do in five years time where do you see yourself and i remember one person answered not here i you know not 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 in this company in five years you know it's a bizarre answer you got to understand that this world of staying in a company for 20 30 years really there's very few people actually do that nowadays this person answers it i want to come in here i want to learn as much and potentially move on to a bigger role if it's not elsewhere. You're not honest. You got to, you got to appreciate the honesty there. So you know, to have a think around saying that's the right answer to do, but maybe at the moment, but certainly have to think around the whole. Thing. I personally think it's a bit of a cheesy question. I wouldn't necessarily ask it, but you know there is there's certain it's like a negative thing or tell me one of your uh, you know. So it's yeah, not to, not to overthink it. I think we can probably have time for one more question. So this one is for John. So John, can you contact employers on spec with CV? What would make an on spec CV stand out? What was that? Sorry, you might be a bit crackly there, Lauren. Did I? What did I press? I tell you, technology. With me. <laughs> John, can you contact employers on spec with CV? What would make an on spec CV stand out? Okay. Um... If you're talking about tailoring CVs to roles again, I think it's having that key experience. Um, you know, that comes from doing your research on the company, doing your research on the role and tailoring your own CV to um, to what that role is and what that company is. I think in terms of, of reaching out, I think that question's really getting that, you know, can you reach out to someone with your CV? Absolutely. Look, I think I wouldn't just, you know, send a random cv to someone without introducing yourself but look if you introduce yourself to someone key in the company that's out there um dealing with recruitment dealing with positions and and said look i'm really interested in in joining the team maybe you know for example say it's a tech role you know i see you don't have many tech roles out at the moment but i know you're growing in that area maybe i can hand you my cv and you can keep it on by it i think that's a really nice way to, to introduce yourself and i think i think that can only be a positive thing so don't be afraid to do that yeah yeah certainly i like you got this we or say John Shirt an awful lot of CVs from agencies that I've never heard of. But maybe you know the names obviously not on it. But it's it, it kind of gets infuriating for a while. Half the warm leads. Warm leads is looking at connections on LinkedIn. Who do I know that this person knows? Who can, who can introduce me to them? Do that definitely is warm leads, but I would stay away from using cold leads, throwing your C V out there to you have no idea we have no contacts. So just you know, listen, we've all got loads of contacts we didn't even realize we had just to kind of look at that. Yeah. Well, that's the end. That's all the questions. Um, these were both absolutely great. It was so nice speaking to both of you and getting to hear all your answers. And thank you so much for answering all the questions as well. These were, these were great. Brilliant. No problem for having us. Great. No, and yep, that's the end of the Fishbowl Instagram Live. Thanks. To everyone who was watching, thank you to the employers. And just all who are watching, remember that there are more events happening throughout Bradfest. So keep an eye on the site. But yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah, good luck with you the too. rest of it. Thank you. Cheers. Bye, Thanks guys. for all the questions. Cheers. Bye-bye.